Hello! Alright, we're going to go over J7, which is integers as exponents. And so we're going to start by refreshing or reviewing our exponent rules. Okay, the first one is our zero exponent rule, which states that any number raised to the zero power is one. Unless the base is zero itself, then that's undefined, but we will not be dealing with that in this class. So for our purposes, any number raised to the zero power is going to be one. Okay, the second one is our negative exponent rule, which says we can get rid of a negative exponent by moving it across the fraction line. Okay, so right now, a to the negative n, that, there's no fraction, there's no denominator, right? That would just be over one. So if I wanna take this and move it down into the denominator, I would end up with one over a to the n power, okay? So if we have negative exponents um, on the top or on the bottom, we can move them just by, um, moving them across the fraction line in order to change the sign of the exponent. So in this case, if I had a to the negative m over b to the negative n, I could bring the top base down, which would make it a to the positive m on the bottom, and I could take my b to the negative n up, which would then make it b to the positive n, okay? So we'll use this rule a lot to just kind of like move things across um, where we need them to be so that we can collect all of our B's in one place or all of our A's in one place or whatever type of variable we're working with, okay? Our next one that we use all the time is our product rule. Product rule says if you have the same base being multiplied together, we can simply add their exponents, okay? Quotient rule says that we can subtract the exponents, but I, I don't know that I want to say it like that, <laughs> okay? We could write this as a to the n minus m, but I just want to show you an intermediate step as to why. If I use this idea that I can move things across the fraction line to change the sign, if I wanted to collect all of the a terms up in the numerator, if I move this guy up, okay, I would have the a to the n that was already up there, and if I move this one up, it becomes a to the negative m, right? Because if I move it across the fraction line, it changes the sign of the exponent. And now I can just use this product rule that says as long as I have the same bases being multiplied, I can just combine their powers. So same thing goes here. I can just combine the powers, okay? So that's why we say with quotient rule, we can just subtract. Okay, it's because we're moving the bottom one up. Um, and some of our purposes, we might wanna go ahead and take the top one down. It just kinda depends on the specific problem, okay? All right, so let's look at power rule. Power rule says if we have a base with an exponent and it's raised to another exponent, we can actually just multiply those exponents, okay? <clears throat> and if we have more than one base inside our little parentheses here, like this one, we have an a and a b within that base, then this power n needs to be distributed to both. And notice that's not n times a and n times b, we're distributing it to their exponents. So right now it's like we have one a and one b. So if I distribute that in, that's gonna give me a to the nth power, b to the nth power, okay? And the same thing is true for raising a rational expression to a power or a fraction to a power we have to distribute that n to the top and the bottom. So this gives us a to the n over b to the n, okay? One thing I do wanna note, because we'll get into this in the next section or two, when we see um, parentheses raised to a power, um, I'm just gonna put a note over here. Okay, if I had a plus b to the nth power, this is not a to the n plus b to the n. This is not true, okay? So if there is a plus or a minus sign inside those parentheses, we cannot just distribute that n in. That is incorrect. Because what this says is that we have a plus b times a plus b dot dot dot, however many n times being multiplied together. Okay, and we multiply and foil and distribute all this mess out, we're gonna get a whole lot more than just that, okay? So this um, rule of distributing the power only is okay when we just have things multiplied within a base, okay? Not when we have addition or subtraction, okay? Just a little side note there. 
All right, so using these powers, let's go ahead and look at some examples. So at the bottom of the page, we have four to the fifth power times four to the negative eighth. The fours are the same base, so that means I can just combine um, their exponents and do four minus eight, right? Which gives me four to the negative three. And then notice our instruction says, simplify the following expressions, write your solution with positive exponents. That means we can't leave our answer like this. So to get rid of a negative exponent, remember we're gonna move it across the fraction line. So if it's on top, we move it to the bottom. It's in the denominator, we move it to the top. So this one right now, this is like four to the negative third over one, right? So we're gonna move it down into the denominator. So I get one over four cubed, and now we can simplify this, right? Four cubed is four times four times four. So four times four is 16, times another four is 64. So we get one over 64. And then we're completely simplified, okay? Let's look at this next one over to the right. Two ninths to the zero power. Okay. I'm not going to worry about distributing that zero to top and bottom because our very first exponent rule said that any number raised to the zero power, no matter how ugly it is, just ends up being one. Okay. All right. On this one, we have 2b to the fourth is raised to the uh, third power. We're cubing it. There's no plus or minus in here, so I can go ahead and just distribute. Right. This is like 2 to the first power, and remember, we're distributing to the exponent, not to the actual number itself. So we're not doing 3 times 2, we're doing 2 to the third power, right? And then b to the, when we multiply the 4 and the 3, that gives us b to the 12th, all right? Now let's look at the z ones over here. Oops, I'm not done. I'm not done! <laughs> because I have 2 cubed which I can simplify, right? That's two times two times two. So two times two is four times another two is eight. So this gives us eight B to the 12th power. Now I'm done. <laughs> all right, on this one, notice I wanna get all my Z's in the same spot. So using this idea of the quotient rule and that I can move the bottom up or I can take the top down, I wanna think about where should I move this so that my Z exponent ends up positive? Because I want my answers to have positive exponents. So if I move my 17 up, or my se uh, Z to the 17th up, it's gonna become a negative 17. And three and negative 17 leaves me with a negative value, right? But if I move my Z cubed down, then I would, that would turn into a negative three when it comes down here, and 17 and negative three ends with a positive. So I'm gonna move this guy down. So when I take everything out of the numerator, we're always left with a one. It doesn't just go away, right? So I had a z to the 17 already, and then when I move the z to the third down, it becomes z to the negative three. And then I can go ahead and combine these. So I end up with one over z to the 14th, right? And there's nothing left to simplify, so I just leave it like that, okay? Then I wanna look at the next one. The next one, these are just two monomials being multiplied. So when I have two monomials being multiplied, all I'm doing is multiplying the number parts with the number parts and the variable parts with the variable parts. So you can think of doing this as negative three times negative six, right and then multiplying my x's together so x squared and x to the negative seven and then my y is y to the first and y cubed and then just um figuring out what all that equals right negative three times negative six is 18 and then we have x squared and x to the negative seven which gives us x to the negative fifth and then y to the first and y cubed gives us y to the fourth okay you don't have to write this step out i was just explaining it how we're getting to this point, okay? And then again, we wanna make sure everything's written with positive exponents. So my x to the negative fifth, we're gonna take that down to the denominator, okay? Now notice I'm only taking the one with a negative exponent down. So that means that my 18 and my y to the fourth are gonna stay on top, and only my x to the fifth goes down. And now it's gonna be x to the positive five, okay? Let me look at one more. So this one, we are squaring this entire rational um, expression. So we wanna go ahead and distribute that two to everything's exponent. Notice the four right now doesn't have a written exponent. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a one there. So I know I have a one four, okay? So when I distribute this, 
this is going to give me 4 squared x to the 14th and then on bottom y to the 12th right and the only thing I have left to do is simplify that 4 squared so this gives me 16x to the 14th all over y to the 12th all right okay so on the next page I believe there are seven for you guys to try okay if you have questions feel free to holler at me but do your best to work these by yourself pause the video if you need to um, and then whenever you're ready to go over them go ahead and play the video and we'll talk through them all right, so we're gonna go ahead and go over them. I'm sorry my paper has a little bit of a glare. I have a page protector, but I'll scoot it up as I talk about each one. So the first one, x to the negative 10, y to the, or sorry, x to the negative 10, x to the seventh, we can go ahead and just combine the exponents, which gives us x to the negative three, and then take it to the denominator so that we get a positive exponent on that x, okay? Number two, what I did is I went ahead and took the z to the 17th up to the top. Now, when I bring it up to the top, that's going to give me z to the negative 17. So I'm going to be combining the 23 exponent and the negative 17, which I brought up, in order to get z to the 6th. Okay? Number three, um, you can move the negative 12 up. I did the intermediate step of subtracting. You don't have to do that. You can think about this as x cubed on top. And when we bring up that negative 12, it becomes a positive 12. So we're gonna combine the three and the positive 12, which gives us x to the 15, okay? If I'm going fast, remember you can slow the video down or you can pause it to work through each one, right? All right, so for number four, we are cubing everything that is in here. So we have a negative two that needs to be cubed and we have an a to the negative two that needs to be cubed. So when I multiply that out, negative two cubed gives me negative eight. a to the negative two cubed is gonna give me a to the negative six. Now notice, eight does not have a negative exponent. So we don't have to worry about moving that. Negative numbers are okay. Negative exponents we have to move. So only the a to the uh, six or to the negative six has a negative exponent. So we're only going to be moving that a to the sixth down to the denominator in order to make it a positive six, okay? All right, number five, we're distributing the negative one to everything's exponent. So we're taking the, let me scoot this over. We're taking the negative one times two, which gives us a to the negative two. Negative one times negative one gives us b to the first power and negative one times three gives me c to the negative three, okay? And then I just simplified. The b to the one, I don't have to write the one. If I just end up with one b, I just end up with one b, but I don't have to write the exponent of one, okay? Then my a to the negative two, I'm gonna take down to the denominator to make it a positive two. My c to the negative three, I'm gonna bring up to make it a positive exponent, all right? All right, number six, same idea, distribute the four to everything's exponent. When I distribute it, I multiply exponents, so that gives me x to the 16th, two to the fourth, and y to the negative 12, and the only thing I need to move is that y to the negative 12. So my y uh, base is gonna move up to give me a positive 12, and then you need to go ahead and multiply out your two to the fourth, which equals 16 in the denominator, okay? All right, and then our last problem is, Number seven, ah, I'm trying to make it where there's no glare. I may have to take my page protector off next time. All right, <clears throat> number seven, we just have two monomials being multiplied. So you can write it all out with numbers and letters side by side, or you can just do it by looking at it. Three times negative three is gonna give me this negative nine. A to the negative eighth times A to the seventh leaves me with A to the negative one. B to the negative 10 and B to the negative two gives me B to the negative 12. Okay. Notice, even though 9 is negative, it doesn't have a negative exponent. So negative 9 is going to stay on the top, and then my two variable bases, because they have negative exponents, we're going to move those down to the denominator. And notice, when I move a to the negative 1 down, it becomes a to the positive 1, and we don't usually write the exponent when it's the, pow it's the first power. Okay, So we're just going to write that as a, b to the 12th. Okay? All right, so that is the end of... 
j7 integers as exponent, so you should now be able to finish um, that homework. If you have questions, please email me um, or ask me in class. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next video.